All right, very pleased to be joined at this time by Coach Travis James. Coach was the head coach at Rhodes, down here down here in the South anyway, not Georgia, but the South. And uh, now he's the offense coordinator at Union College in New York. So, Coach, you've gone from uh, Tennessee to New York. It was quite the move, I'm going to tell you that. Quite a bit different, but, a good, <laughs> but it's been a good one so far. Absolutely. Ball is ball, but uh, it's a little that right. might be a little different. <laughs> much different i'm gonna tell you that right now much much different uh, coach i appreciate you joining me i know you guys are busy getting ready for the season we're gonna talk a little gap play today uh what you got yeah coach and thank you for your op- the opportunity to speak with you today i want to just challenge us a little bit about really complimentary play design it's kind of what we're going to get into today as usual i probably have more tape than time but we're going to get moving to make sure that i'm handling things appropriately and so Without further ado, we'll just kind of get rolling right into it. And so I would be foolish if I didn't mention that I work at one of the most special places in the country. You're talking about a place that's educated a United States president and all the other things that you see there in front of you, Fortune 500 CEOs are directly connected to our football program more specifically. And then we have a proud program. We're, we've won 71% of our games since 1981. We've That puts us towards the tops in the country at any level. And Obviously, we're a consistent ranking opponent in the in the top 25 and winning championships here. And then I get to work for the man on the far left of the screen, Jeff Behrman, who, in my opinion, is the best head coach in college football. And I'm lucky to call him my boss and our leader, but most, more importantly, a friend. And so, but I don't want to waste too much time because, like I said, I've always got more tape than time. And so, in terms of our thought process today, I do think it begins with how we build an offense. And I think it's an important idea that we're not just collecting plays, but we're really building a system. And so from an identity standpoint, it's important to understand that we are an 11 personnel run play action team. We're a little bit of a throwback that way. We're still a gun team, but that's our identity. We're Our base belief is we're going to throw the ball to score and run the ball to win. We really want to make sure that we're establishing the run consistently. And we need a system that's built really to do four things for us. Number one, we need to be able to highlight our personnel, accentuate our strengths, minimize our weaknesses. And it's really got to be nimble. We got to be able to do that as the ebbs and flows of the season really affect us. Then obviously we have to be able to exploit matchups both in the box and on the perimeter. At the same time, we need to have enough in our arsenal to be able to counter defensive techniques. How can we use what the defense is taught against them? And then finally, how can we take advantage of space available, right? And those are in no particular order. As I say some of those things, you're like, geez, coach, how are you going to get through all this stuff and teach all these kids how to play? Um, we really are in a balance between two realities every year. The more we know about less, the better we'll be. In other words, if we can execute out, execute better than anybody else, we're going to be in really good shape. And on the other side, the more we do well on offense, the harder we are to defend. And we got to do that in our league. We play in a great league for the top 25 teams in the country. We play, including ourselves. And so what we've kind of come up with is the idea of complementary play design within the system. And that has advantages in the locker room, obviously. Marrying like schemes together that allows our guys to master their techniques, allows them to master the scheme, but also that's going to breed confidence and speed in their execution. And then Great teams have strong tendencies. We know that. We know what we're really good at, and we believe that we have a good recipe to exploit them. And then when you talk about how that advantage gives, how that gives us an advantage versus an opponent, overlap and action is creating conflict and doubt. We want as much of our runs and our passes and our screens and our specials to really overlap. And we believe that the best manipulator of the defense at our disposal is establishing the run first and foremost. And so, That scheme is a major scaffold for a a major chunk of our offense. It's one of a few things that we want to be really, really good in. And the central theme of it all is we want to build walls and set edges. That's what we're trying to do in this scheme. Why gap? Why have we gravitated this way? Number one, we believe it's a dynamic scheme because it's a domino effect in terms of the way that we teach the ball carriers and the pullers. And more specifically, we're talking counter gap today. We believe it's formationally diverse. We can be in a great in this scheme and one back or two back and anything else we believe will make us successful. And then obviously it's adaptable to personnel. We believe that if we are even or superior than you, then you're going to have a long day with this style of scheme. And we believe if we're overmatched, 
then this gives us a chance. And really because of the advantages that you see below. Number one's common sense. We got angles on the defense. And that's basically because we have a uh, we have leverage, play side leverage on the second level defender that we're responsible for. So we can move people on the first level better. Our pullers can gain vision and leverage as they pull to the opposite side to the point of attack. The advantage number two is it's centered around a double team. We know that all of these things are going to be centered around massive movement at the point of attack, which I'm going to get to here in a moment. Common sense wise, it's plus one football, right? We're adding pullers to outnumber and outflank the defense. And then finally, we really do believe that if you're going to stop this scheme type, this specialty counter, which we are um, very proficient in, that you better be totally aligned defensively on how this thing's going to go. How are you going to split the double? How are you going to spill the trap puller? How's your linebacker going to take on the wrapper? What happens with the when the ball bounces to the force player outside? You better be aligned. And we believe that that gives us great advantages in the the other pieces of this um, of this scheme. And so a couple things to align ourselves to make sure we're speaking the same language in terms of the pieces of this scheme. It begins on the play side. And we talk to the play side of the offensive line about denting the defense. In other words, we're trying to throw the first level to the second level. And so when our play side blockers come up to the line of scrimmage, they have a drive double down mentality. It's an old gap down backer. It's just the way that we alliterate it for our guys. So if I've got a guy in my inside gap, I drive block him. If I don't have somebody in my inside gap, but I have somebody on me, I double team him. If I don't have either, then I'm down to the point linebacker. We are a point system. Everything is on angle to the point, that leverage piece that we talked about here in a minute. But the debt gets the thing started in terms of building a wall on the interior of the scheme. The debt works with the choke. When the choke is the backside blocker, it's the center blocking back. And whoever is left on the backside of the scheme as what we would call a singe player. The basic idea of the choke is I am also part of this wall on the backside. I want to make sure that my priorities that I live up to those, which is no penetration, nothing up my backside shoulder, and nothing crossing my face. And to do that, I have to have awareness of how the front is going to move. What are stance keys telling me? What are the alignment of the backers telling me? We've got to make sure that we are putting ourselves to build the other piece of this interior wall. Now, the last piece of it, and maybe out of order here, give me a moment here, coach. No, no problem. Now, the last piece of it for us is what we call the rhythm of the play, which is the pullers. And for us, the pullers, there is a basic rhyme that we instruct these guys with. The trap sets the aiming point, the rap fixes the trap, and the ball fixes everybody. There is a rhythm to this play. The trap's job is to kick or log. We are not an old school, anything other than a kick out's unacceptable. And this is obviously setting the stage for our play action as we get to go up and get going. But we need to be definitive with the trap puller. The rap puller needs to be back and behind the trap puller. He should not be even, and he certainly should not be ahead. And the ball should be back and behind the rap puller. Because at the end of the day, how we work together is going to set where the ball is going to puncture. And so as we tell the rap puller and the ball carrier, if I see my buddy's butt, I cut it up. In other words, if my buddy's sh shoulder pads turn towards the sideline, then the ball is going to go inside. If I see my buddy turn, it's time to burn. We're going to hit the afterburners and we're taking the thing outside. And so let's get to some tape a little bit so we can get rolling here. So we're going to run counter to the left. I think it's a front flexible system. You're going to see us run this versus a four down scheme right now. You're going to see the left guard and the left tackle. They're going to be the dent side, the center, and the tackle are going to be part of the choke side. We're going to get the trapper, and then we will get the wrapper for the second level. And I'm going to keep moving quickly. Like I said, I want to get to more tape than anything else. I know we have short time today. I say I'm trying to go quick, and here we are, Kings, and at the line of scrimmage. So <laughs> you're going to see us do a great job, throw this first level into the second level. Our left tackle, Tim Driscoll, phenomenal job. The trap puller. It's a kick read. In other words, if I can fit my near foot, near shoulder through the kick out, I'm going to fit it and we're going to kick it. The wrap puller fits inside the trap puller and the ball does what we call pins behind the wrap puller. Great explosive run here. Okay. Now, in terms of front flexibility, you just saw a pretty much standard four, two, five system, a little bit of front movement, right? 
Now we're getting into stack system, heavy blitz pressure. I'm sure y'all are seeing this a fair amount yeah. down in Georgia right now. And so you're going to see us run get counter to the right. You're going to see us end up uh, getting with the play side guard in the center. And I want to put special attention to the right tackle in this case. When we talk to these guys on the front side about collecting and defining. My plate, my inside gap is my priority gap. He's got three threats at the point of attack. We say when any time your gap is threatened and you're unsure, don't get slow, get square, because then you're going to be able to fix it on the run. I think he does a phenomenal job here. Once again, we're getting a kick read, the first puller. We're getting a kick read, the rat puller. The ball bends behind the rat puller. Great job. This is when I was at Illinois College. You'll see a few different teams, a few different takes. I've been blessed to coach in a lot of different places, okay? So now – and we're talking about the flexibility of these schemes as well. So here we are. We're going to go counter to the right once again. When we have a three technique on the backside, we give our center and we give our offensive line the power to pull the center. You see us in a condensed set. Once again, we're making sure that we're formation ourselves appropriately. It's still going to be counter to the right. We're going to get a trapper. We're going to get a wrapper. And the mesh is going to change slightly for the running back. But it all stays the same. You can see the running back, even from the pistol, is trying to fix himself to get behind the backside leg of the second floor. We have the ability to throw the first level to the second level. We're getting kick reads, and the ball should bend up to hash. Once again, another great run for us. Okay? Now, we are just as much of a GP counter team as we are a GY counter team. We believe that these two things work together. We believe that GP counter it gives us the ability to run the ball strong right. at Gaskin. We don't always feel like we have to run to the open side. We'll, we will toggle between 12 and 11 personnel. This gives us the ability to run the ball strong out of base personnel groupings. We're going to run GT counter to the right. Now we get to cave in the play side. You see the right tackle and tight ends double team towards a point linebacker is getting done exactly what we want done. We're going to get a kick read for the trap puller. We're going to get a, 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 a we're going to get the plus one linebacker running right through the face of the right tackle. And this ball ends up blasting outside of the tackle. Once again, diverse play in terms of its aiming point. Now, when we talk about diversity of the play, you can see that we're in tight end wing and a tight split from the outside receiver. I'm jumping to the tight copy. I'm trying to stay on task, which is hard for me right now. But we'll, we're going to load this on the front side of the scheme, just talking about how a base play can hit and puncture in a variety of ways. We're going to see the same blocking scheme out of the offensive line with how we're going to handle the, this odd front structure. But with the extra tight end, we can load this. We know the trappers are going to go a spot wider for us. And so now we're going to get a great log read by the, for the right guard. The right tackle sees his buddy turn. It's now time to burn. And it's same thing for the running back who fixes everybody, the rhythm of the play. You can see Stan Coss, a right tackle. He thinks he's Carl Lewis out there running down the track. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's good to see good guy, fast guys in space, the big guys moving. And once again, we can be as Neanderthal with these plays as we want. Here we are in 22 personnel. We're going to run the quarterback. Same base play for us. We'll watch this one from the wide because it gets a little muddy when we get to the tight. Now we're going to bring four pullers to the point of attack. We're running GT. Backside tight end is working to cut off the C gap. We're pulling the tight end and the running back. It's a simple student body to the right. But it all comes off of base schemes. Now I want to go to the tight copy real quick. To look at the right tackle in the tight end. You've seen the centerpiece of all these plays have been massive double teams at the point of attack where we have built a wall on the defense. Our guys understand this philosophy and they do it really, really well. So now, as we start to transition ourselves into, we just built a great foundation. We're a great gap scheme running team. Once again, more specifically gap counter. We use a very similar set of rules and very similar actions to build the basis of one of our primary play action protections. Here we are just on the air, and then we'll get into some tape. So here we are. We're showing counteraction to the left. 
can see that the play side of the offensive line, the left guard and the left tackle are working the debt. But instead of moving the first level to the second level, we're going to make sure that we are holding the line of scrimmage as firm as we can. Between the backside tackle and the center and the running back, we are going to secure and choke the backside off. So we've got two sets of edge, two sets of eyes off the weak side edge. And between the pulling guard and the pulling tight end, we have two sets of eyes off the opposite edge, create a firm and square pocket for the quarterback. Now, as we start to play things through and start to play these things live, here we are, we'll get right to the tight copy. Once again, we could talk forever about the route schemes and everything that go with this, but we'll just focus on the protection. And we're going to run this play protection to the left-hand side. <clears throat> we're going to see the left tackle, the center, and the left guard work to be firm. You can see as the left tackle starts to squeeze the big gap and hold the line of scrimmage, the point linebacker who we would be responsible for in the run game or the pass game becomes a blitzer. He is ours. You can see that the running back, the tackle, have two sets of eyes off the weak side edge, and we've got big protection off the right-hand side. And to the left-hand side, we've got firm protection from the inside out, from the tight end, and from the puller. As we start to keep rolling through and get to some different looks, one of, my, one of the first questions that we get as coach, that's all great when everybody's lined up on the line of scrimmage, what happens when you get any type of slot blitz? How can you handle that? There's a system of calls that we work through in the offensive line world to make sure that we are sound. But here's a good illusion. We're going to get slot blitz late. That's why we put two sets of eyes off each edge. The tackle knows that he's got immediate help from the center, and he is now late help out to the running back. We do a great job securing that edge, and you can feel the puller, pullers working to be strong off the front side edge, and the reaction from the second level and the safeties the threat of run creates great one-on-one -on -one opportunities for us in space to be able to take shots down the field. That's a great pickup. It is, um, isn't it? And these guys really buy into the system of communication that we have. You can see we got a, a variety of stunt movements here, but they're disciplined. And I would argue, Coach, that one of the reasons this becomes second nature is because there's so many rule systems that look the same in the right, run game right. or the pass game. Now, as we start to look at even different pieces to where we can extend edges, now, instead of pulling the tight end from opposite, we're going to align him on the play side, and he's going to load on the front side. Now we have the ability to extend the edge for the puller if we've got a really dangerous speed rusher. And it's also a different way to affect the safeties who may be reading the tight ends block in different mm -hmm. ways. And so here we are. The tight end's going to load on the front side of the scheme. We're still going to provide two uh, two eyes off the edge for the tackle who's for the left tackle on the left on the right hand side of our screen. But now it's important for the guard to understand that there's nobody coming to help him from the inside out. His help is inside of him. But nonetheless, we still have the ability to provide a firm pocket for the quarterback. Great action moves the linebackers that start to impale themselves towards the line of scrimmage, and create a great curl window for us on the second level, and then getting into a, one of the final pictures that we have once again the split may change we protect ourselves quite a bit formationally but at the end of the day and i'd like to watch this one from the wide copy we're getting zone coverage but watch what happens the front side now this is a little bit different protection we're going to put the running back on the play side to protect the guard and we're going to keep the tight end on the back side to protect the tackle once again different ways to manipulate the second and third level we're in zone coverage but the action of the run, our effectiveness in running the counter scheme has created one-on-one -on -one matchups in zone coverage as linebackers start to impale themselves towards the line of scrimmage and to be able to create clear pictures for the quarterback. That's one of the best advantages of this protection style. And then finally, we have the ability to run this on the move. So now we're going to run the same protection. We're going to extend the edge off of the right-hand side with the tight end loading in the box, but now a one-word call to the offensive line has alerted us that we are going to be on the move, basically true waggle path on the edge here, and we have the ability to move the launch point for the quarterback, and so we've really seen over the course of um, multiple protections, four different protections specifically, 
the rule system for the offensive line is almost identical. Right. And the way that we can manipulate the second and the third level to make clear reads for the quarterback is really, really effective for us. And so I know that was a quick time. I believe this was a 15-minute conversation in here. I probably went over, but oh, I wanted you did to make great. sure that I loaded y'all with some tape. Um, so, There's Coach, coach's any questions email. or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, if they got their email, and get it. But let me tell you this why I love this, Coach. I'm going to leave the slide up with your, your email and all, so if anybody needs it. Yeah. There's two reasons I love this. One is I love counter, so um, you don't you don't have to sell me on that. Right. But let, let me tell you this. My man, Coach Crisp at Ringo, mm-hmm. he texted me the other day. He said, Coach, do you know – did y'all ever run counter play action? I hope I'm not embarrassing. And I said, um, no, we didn't. We tried. Mm-hmm. We struggled a little bit with it. We tried to do some – powers stuff anyway he said well do you know somebody that does i really want to research this i said i don't know man i'll ask around and um he said he has he had gone through the whole internet and can't find anybody talking about county (laughs) so we have set either he's not looking hard enough or we've set the first one uh you're gonna see more and more of this i never seen the waggle off of it that was pretty cool yeah. Um, yeah. I would, if I had to do over again, I would have done more of our play action like this. And, and I mm-hmm. think as off as the defenses are getting better, you're going to have to, because I'll be, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say it, but a lot of times we're running counter and when we're play action off of it, we were base blocking. You know what I mean? Like it, looked, and did. it just was what it was and it didn't really bite us, you know, a couple of years ago, but defense is getting better. Like you said, they're, they're just getting better. And uh, I love it. Counter, I think counter is the best plays there is. And I'll tell you what else I like was the long, the um adding the tight end and the 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 two tight ends especially made it more right. like a sweep or a pin and pull type play. Correct. Um, and I assume you know, and, and I like that y'all are teaching it in a modern way where you just accept it's going to bounce a lot. Correct. You just accept that. Like instead of yes. being that hard ass about we got to you know. Yes, it would be great to kick them and run inside. That's obviously mm-hmm. plan A. But I didn't know that – I don't think some of the people that do this against their scout team and get that same look and dominate, especially at the high right. school level, we just dominate the scout team every day. Right. And then you get in the game and it bounces every time and they don't really know how to bounce it. But truthfully, if it bounces and everybody's on the same page, it's not really a problem. It, it becomes a real like, – that's kind of what we were talking about earlier in terms of it being dynamic. Now, yeah. I will tell you this. I mean, we train the snap yeah. out of pullers, but we don't overcomplicate it ever. I, there's a drill that we believe in, and really that's what we do, that and live team reps. And anybody, whether it's yourself or anybody who'd be interested in getting that drill work, I have plenty of tape of that, and I'd be happy to share that as well. But I can all but guarantee you a man named Austin Chris from Ringo is going to get it. So that is absolutely me. fine. Um, so I hope, I hope I didn't embarrass Coach. I'm going to text him <laughs> when I get off of this and tell him. Um, Excellent. But I did, Coach. I thought that was great. I like the different ang- – you know, you can hit it so many different ways. I kind of I kind of used to run counter. I love counter. probably. But we didn't run it much with a tight end because – to the tight end side and all because it sure. it changed the hole and back, you know. But what I learned from – what I learned today and what I see from what y'all are doing is when you have a, a very limited number of schemes – and when the offensive line, basically the pass pro is the same as the run play, mm-hmm. you got more time to work the minutia of it. You know, you got more time. Yeah, to, sure. And I think that's what I hope people are getting from this. Uh, and people can take something from that, even if they've never even run counter, only know what it is. Whatever they're right. running, you better get so good at it and marry it with so many different things that you don't have to have that many other things. So you can focus on all this little stuff that you have to do because your back's got to understand. You know, that's what I was impressed watching your running back because I thought there's a lot of different ways to run that play. No know, doubt. Based on what they get and that back's having to see it based on if he's got one tight end, no tight end, two tight ends. Uh, right. Based on if it's odd or even, you know, things going to hit a little different based on mm-hmm. what they do to the, the kick. And he probably couldn't even tell you, I'm not going to knock on your running back, but some of them probably couldn't even tell you what I just said. But right. they can do it. Because exactly. they've done it so many times in practice, they understand. They don't yes. know why. They just know. Exactly. They know. <laughs> and, and for them, like you said, Coach, the minutia of it and being able to really focus on compartmentalizing our teaching, that makes everybody's life that much easier at the end of the day. And the overlap of run to pass takes it to a whole nother level. And 
you mentioned that our, our blitz pickup that we had against the team in the orange Hobart, that's because we've seen so much Sam yeah. fire and they understand how to fix that, but it's not just how to pick it up in the protection. It's that's my awareness on how the backside of the front is going to move. So I can be a great gap blocker as well. So yep. that's why we're really big believers in a complimentary play system. We didn't talk about the screens. We didn't talk about yeah, the depth. But they're there. The they're there. And so. Hey, we'll get you back, this Coach. This is like a <laughs> sequel. It's like the Saw movies. We can have like nine or ten of these, you know. Uh, yeah. People, pe I've just found that the 15, 20 minutes is about all they want to hear of people. But in this format. And it, people sure. learn one thing. You know, they don't. And um, Correct. So. I love that format, but coach, I mean it, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking no time. I know you're busy, and yes. um, I, I wish you the best this year. I'll be following you guys. I listen, and, I'm, and I, I promise I did not check this on my phone, but I think the 21st president was Chester Arthur. You got it right, you boss. You got it. <laughs> His I, I thought maybe right Garfield. It's either James Garfield or Chester Arthur. That's a good uh, memory. The yeah, state of George has been really good to me in my time, whether it's coaching players or recruiting those guys in a couple of different places I've been. So if I get to give back to y'all, it is a no brainer. Appreciate I appreciate it. you having Come me. Come see yeah. us in December, coach. You know it, boss, man. I appreciate you. Take care, coach. Take care for you. I'll talk to you soon. See you, man. Bye.